Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. After long periods of producing high-quality players at youth level, only to have them never break through to the first team, a transfer ban has meant that the 1920 season has been the season Chelsea's academy has gotten its opportunity to shine. But Chelsea has been England's best academy for years, so why have so few previously broken through to the first team? Well, let's take a look. And if you want to keep up with Chelsea, or any team of your choosing, including getting live score updates, stats, and news, you can do so through OneFootball, which is the football app to have. You can download it through the link in the description to support the channel. In 2009, Chelsea won their first FA Youth Cup since 1961. And over the past decade since, Chelsea have undoubtedly had the most successful academy in English football. The FA Cup is highly prestigious at youth level, and in 10 years they have won it a remarkable 7 times and contested another final in 2013. Add to that, 2 UEFA Youth Cups as well as 2 runner-up appearances and 2 under-18 Premier Leagues and you begin to get a glimpse of the levels Chelsea's youth achieve. In addition, at the Under-20 World Cup where England were champions, Chelsea contributed the second most players to the squad after Everton and when the Under-17s won the World Cup that same year, Chelsea contributed the most players and a third of the under-19 Euro winning team were from Chelsea. These constant successes are no coincidence. When Roman Abramovich took over the club in 2003, he invested a lot of money, not only in the first team, but the academy as well, as he heavily invested in improving the facilities at Cobham for all teams at the club. He also poached staff who had been previously successful in developing youth elsewhere, such as Frank Arneson from Tottenham. Chelsea's academy is so reputable that players are keen to join, making it easy for the club to mop up the best young talents from competing academies after scouting them with their expansive scouting network around Europe. In fact, this need to poach the best and brightest is what has led to their transfer ban. But once the players are brought in, they get to experience what makes the academy so good. The academy was awarded Category 1 status as one of the best around, meaning that they are granted more contact time with young players. As a result, Chelsea have altered their structure, now providing full-time education facilities to their players from ages as young as under 14, as they aim to produce more holistic players. Category 1 also grants them access to the highest competitions. This fits in with the Chelsea mold, who from young age groups aim to fly their teams to international tournaments in order to experience and face new challenges from abroad and have more opportunities to challenge for trophies. It's interesting to note that at Chelsea there seems to be a bigger emphasis on winning at youth level compared to most academies who focus on improving their players in a more process-oriented method. However, with the academy's world-class facilities, including an ever-improving specialist gym and indoor all-weather pitches, it's no surprise that coaches expect results. But one element which helps to set them apart is their one-on-one -on -one analysis. Before training sessions, youth players have access to individual analysis, where players can see every touch they took in a match and this highlights package is coded so they can monitor their progress and pinpoint areas of improvement. This is helped by one-on-one -on -one feedback with their youth team coaches. But despite these outstanding facilities, recently Chelsea have been encouraging their players to look for first team experience as quickly as possible, and the loan system is their favoured way of doing this. So has this system of producing players bared any fruit? Yes, for the most part Chelsea's academy is successful at producing players. In 2018-19, Chelsea's academy graduates played the fourth most minutes of any academy in the Premier League and the academy is consistently producing Premier League level players with a few of the recent ones including Ake, Bertrand, Van Aanholt, Atsu and more. And in 2015-16, 10 out of the 72 Football League teams had loaned at least one player from Chelsea. However, the problem is that Chelsea themselves rarely gave these minutes to their graduates, as shown by in 2018 only 5% of the available game time being afforded to their graduates. This has been a major problem at the academy. Since John Terry debuted in 98, there hasn't yet been an academy graduate to make a major and prolonged impact at the club. Although, to be fair, a lack of graduates is a problem faced by most elite teams around Europe. Either way, this has led to frustration around the club, as players have failed to make that final leap. Former academy coach Adi Bevesh has expressed this, 
believing that Chelsea have had several players good enough to make the leap to the first team, but they just haven't had the chance. Even players like Charlie Musonda have gone on record to express their dissatisfaction with the current youth system. But why is this the case? Well, in his era, Roman Abramovich has had 14 managerial appointments in 16 years at the helm and is renowned for being trigger happy. Integrating youth is usually a long-term process requiring patience and accounting for a learning curve and managers coming in know that they do not have the time to do this and rather buy ready-made players. In addition, the more successful a team is, the harder it is for youth to break through as seen by Barca's relative recent lack of graduates. And with Chelsea being one of the more successful teams in England, it means that their team is stacked with quality players who the youth have to try and displace. In addition, Chelsea do not have a coherent playing philosophy that extends from the youth team to the first team. At Barcelona for example, all teams from under 19 through to the first team use a 4-3-3 with an emphasis on possession, positioning and pressing so that a player can theoretically slot into any team and play their usual way. And while the youth teams at Chelsea may share these traits, the rapid change of manager and need to win now at first team levels means that when new managers come in, they are always bringing in a new style. So a graduate suited to Sarri's style of play would be completely different from what Mourinho would want or what Conte would want. A winger coming through playing a possession 4-3-3 at youth level would have had to adapt to being an inside forward or a wing back in a counter-attacking Conte 3-4-3 whilst trying to adjust to the higher level as well. So Chelsea's way around this is by loaning players out in order to give them game time and to develop. However, a criticism of the club has been the intent to loan in order to sell. The accusation has been that the club has deliberately stockpiled talent who never have a chance of making it in the first team to then either repeatedly loan them out, receiving a loan fee each time, or sell them on for a profit. And due to the fact that compared to their top 6 rivals, Stamford Bridge is relatively small, leading to less matchday revenue, they've had to develop other ways of generating revenue in order to comply with FFP. And in 2018-19, Chelsea had 42 players out on loan. However, Chelsea did not just ship off the loanees and hope for the best. Their loan department consists of two coaches, a dedicated physio, a dedicated strength and conditioning coach to monitor the progress of their on loan players. In addition, the club psychologist is also available to loanees, ensuring that they're in a good mental space when they're out on loan. The club's care for loan players has been acknowledged by Jamal Blackman, who says the club are always sure to make sure you feel like a part of the team. Chelsea do this because in an ideal world, they would want to reintegrate the loanees who excel. As Chelsea's head of youth development pointed out in 1617, the aim is to give the youth players 150 to 200 games of senior experience before reintegrating them into the squad around 22. And this season we see shades of that. Although they haven't necessarily hit the 150 game mark, the academy players who are likely to be integrated this season have mostly had extensive experience on loan, showing that this loan system can be a viable path to the first team, albeit under mitigating circumstances. And it's just as well, as FIFA are planning to start limiting the number of players a team can loan to 8 players from the 2020 season in order to prevent teams loaning out players who would never play for the first team just to receive the loan fee. And this season, the combination of a transfer ban and a manager willing to put his faith in youth has meant that the academy has been on full display, with Abraham, Mount, Tomori, Christensen and more being given the time to both make mistakes and show what they can do. Will this be a turning point for the academy and club philosophy going forward? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If Lampard is successful with the youth this season, will that mean once the transfer ban is over, they won't replace the youth with more expensive replacements? And will this shape the way Premier League clubs operate in the future with regards to their use of youth? So don't forget to let me know your opinion on that in the comments below. And if you want to suggest videos or just keep up with Football Made Simple on social media, you can follow me on Twitter at Football Made Sim or on Instagram Football Made Simple. Thank you for listening. That's all for today and remember, keep it simple.